I add a cursed again. We are going to do another Genius Pages tutorial, and in this one, we're going to look at forms. Before I get into the forms, I just want to point something out because as we go into edit, we're going to reference something. There's a button here called integrations, and you may be integrated with an autoresponder, for example. And when you go into configure these, you'll have some keys and secret keys. And once the integration's done, it'll, it'll walk you through how to set that up. And you'll have an API key. These are, remember we're in, in beta. If you have any issues with those, let me know and also let support know and they'll work on that. We also have, and what I use mostly is Zapier. And there is a separate video for how to do that. Um, that'll be one thing inside the form I'll show you, but you'll also see something called API, and that's going to deal with these integrations. So when I mention that, that's what I'm talking about. So over here, now we're back on our main page, and we can just click on the site that we want to edit, and we're going to look at forms. In the blocks, you have several areas where forms are found. We have contact forms. We have Let's scroll down, sign up forms. And they, it's just different looks. These are all, they operate the same way, the same way they edit, and you have subscribe forms. Okay, I'm gonna go up to a, to a contact form just to pull one out. Remember, you can just click on it and drag the block over. And we'll get rid of that. And you see here, if you just click in the middle area there, there is your form, and you've got the same buttons. You can clone it just like you could any other component. You can delete it, just like any other component, and then you can edit it. And there are several different things that can be edited here. If you click between the fields, the whole thing's in red, you see the outline of red. And if you click edit, it'll edit the whole form itself. You could click on the button, hover over the button, and click edit. We've already done a video on that, but you'll see that's exactly how this all works. Now, what you'll notice here, the only thing that's different on this particular button is you don't have a destination URL that'll go to because that's elsewhere in the form editor, but you can change the button there. You can also click in and edit these fields. That field there has a text area and add comment. You see where it says add comment inside the form. We could change that to say, let us know what you need. I just want to show you change it and then you'll see it changes in the form. You can also do that with the email and the name. If you click on the form, now I've got my auto information coming in there. There's your input. It's a text input. You could change it to something else that it might look for. It'll have an ID and a name, which is the way the form gets passed on. I would not change those unless you know what you're doing. And again, you can change the placeholder uh, where it says your name. And I'm just going to leave that. I'm not going to make any changes to that. You can also change these in the code. Remember, you can go to the edit this block source code from the other video and maybe do a, a find for your name, for example, and we'll see where that is. Oops, and I'm not seeing it. <laughs> uh, it's probably off, but I can just find it. Here we go. Look, email, your email name, your name. You could change the placeholder name right there uh, and the ID and name and things like that. Again, I wouldn't do that, but you can change that right inside the editor. I'm going to cancel that. We don't really want to do that. Just showing you that you can. Then the form itself, if you get it so the whole form is there and click edit, you have your two tabs here. You can change the margin at the top or the bottom, but you can click form. You have to give a form a name. It won't do anything unless it has a name. So we'll call this test one. And then there are several things you can do. You can email the data to yourself, for example, and it'll auto fill this with the, the email address of the account. That's my wife's account. Um, you can then do a confirmation message. I'll show you what that is momentarily. So you can email the data. You could do a custom action. I'm not going to get into that. Leave that alone unless you know what you're doing with it. API integration. Remember at the beginning I showed you the integrations you could do. Well, if you've set any of them up, when you click this, it'll you'll have, you can select the ones you've already set up and then it'll populate the different lists you have inside those autoresponders. And what 
the form will do after they click the button will depend what you have the autoresponder, what you've told it to do. You could also do a web form. You could put your own web form HTML in there by checking that one. Or what I usually do, integrate with Zapier. And if you do Zapier, then there are two things you can do. You can do a custom message or confirmation so that when they click it, it gives them a message. That's going to be the same as this custom confirmation message up here at email data. Again, I'll show you that momentarily. Or you can just simply put a URL in there. So what will happen is they'll click submit and it'll go to Zapier and it'll say, oh, we're looking for data from form test one and here's what we're gonna do with that data. And it could email it, it could put it in an autoresponder, it could text them something, you know, what, well, not in this example because there's no phone number, but whatever you tell Zapier to do with that data, it will do. And then you could go to a thank you page or a redirection, whatever URL you wanna, you wanna put in there. You know, we could send them to, to Google. I don't know again why we would do that, but whatever, wherever you want it to go. Uh, or you can do a, a custom message. I'll show you what a custom message looks like. Um, actually, I'll just leave that there. We could do something like, thanks a bunch. I'll just type something in there just so you can see what happens. And then we can apply the changes. We have to save it. Remember, the forms don't work inside the builder. So we'll go out to the preview. And we'll close that. Let's go to the preview preview changes and I'll just show you where that we'll do test we'll do doesn't really matter thanks submit and it's sending it in and then it'll give us a little message that says thanks and see that's what we put in Whoops, I mistyped it, but that's what I put in. Thanks a bunch. That's, so that's where that information goes. And then you can go back to where you were. I prefer to do a thank you page, um, and I like to use Zapier, but however you want to do it. So that's how you edit your forms and use them. You can move these around, too, just like anything else that you can move. Whoops, got to get it where you can grab it. And you could, you know, maybe we want it over on this side, underneath of there instead, et cetera. So you can manipulate all of those things exactly the same way. It's just when you go to edit them, you have the extra form field and you can put all of that information in there. I'll show you uh, some other things with Zapier in future videos, but that's the form itself. If you have any questions, let me know. And otherwise, happy form building.